Yeah, alright. Uh, let me try messaging Golden. Oh, he's not busy. So guys, awkward start to the game. Uh, we may not have Nam sure for this first one. Uh, not <laughs> any fault of his own. Just a very quick, uh, quick start to the series. So, all right, no worries. Sorry about that, dude. We'll just cast this first one up and then get you in afterwards. For those who don't know, by the way, Nam sure on the call with me. He's Grandmaster Zerg player. He played actually today a little bit. He's not too shabby, and hopefully we'll get his expert uh, expertise, I guess, uh, here for the next <laughs> one. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Sorry to bring you on. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a brand new best of three is underway, and it's between two of the better players you could vote for. Spawning in the top left corner of the map, he is going to be the yellow Zerg player, Alien Invasions, Golden. And his opponent in the top right, from Do You Know, MC's Clan, <laughs> the Red Terran player, Yoda. And, uh... One sec, guys. I didn't get to set up bets or anything, so I'm just gonna tab out and do that real quick. Actually, Namshar, are you still listening? Are you still, uh, or did you mute already? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> unmuted, but... If you could do me a favor, would you mind actually doing a tweet for me, and I just go retweet that afterwards, too? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, guys, we just, like, literally got thrown into this way faster than expected. <laughs> um... I just we're... tweet about the players that are playing now, or...? Yeah, just, uh, you know, basic TV that you'll be casting with me as soon as game one, so... Yep, yep, yep. I'm on okay. it. <laughs> I think we're all caught up. We're less flustered now. Again, my sincerest apologies to Namshire, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Habitation Station is a map that's gotten some seriously good and bad rap to it, and a lot of it, you know, focuses around the fact that there's that gold base in play. It doesn't get utilized a lot, but I gotta tell you, when, when a Zerg player or a Terran player, if they can lock down that gold as either their natural or the third, and you see it more often as the third than the natural, it can be fantastic as far as flooding units in the early game. But these are two players who are kind of, they've come from the top of the game. Yoda, of course, used to be on IM, now kind of just like free balling it, hopefully to get some rec recognition here in WCS. And Golden, a player who disappeared for a little bit, but came back. And when he came back, he didn't come back so strong, but now, recently, through Go for StarCraft, he's been winning them back to back. Well, I don't know about back to back, but he's been winning them a lot. He plays in SoTech from time to time, too. It's nice seeing him in full force. Now, for me, coming to this series, there's a small little side note and a small little hopeful fact that I hope Golden wins. Nothing against Yoda, but if Golden qualifies today, then he competes in my tournament tomorrow. If he doesn't qualify today, then he's not going to be able to compete because he wants to focus on WCS. So fingers are kind of crossed for Golden here, but Yoda, it's kind of hard to like bet against Yoda too. We saw some really good play out of him earlier today, and he's not going to be a player easily dealt with, but uh, actually, almost was one drone, a little bit scary. We do have like the later lanes, here we go, now coming into play. Oftentimes, of course, we see the first four immediately deal with the Reaper and it's not as much of an issue. But without that queen, he's taking a little bit of pepper, so to speak. Goes to the inject right away. No drones have died yet though, which is worth noting. He did just go straight for that speed and then one drone mining for the time being. This is so he can continue to get gas behind it. But we have that third Reaper coming out of Yoda. And if Yoda... If you can get that third Reaper at the map uh, soon enough, this Queen will die. Usually you don't see this investment of Reapers on Habitation Station because, well, it's terrible. They can only either go up the ramp or over here. There's such limited space for them to get in and out of the base. But with three Reapers and a Queen half dead, he can 100% he has the potential to kill this Queen. And that's kind of the point of going for this third Reaper. You delay your factory a little bit because of it, because of the gas cost, but... If you get the Queen kill in, it's worth it, but not going to be worth it. Loses that Reaper, doesn't get the Queen. So low, Golden keeps it alive. And it looks like Yoda, well, it's still with two Reapers as a threat, let's not forget. You can still kill that Queen, but more importantly, the Hellion follow-up to this won't be as neutered as it otherwise would be if you lost all three of the Reapers. Uh, but the reactor is finishing up on the barracks right now, so we'll see those Hellions in a moment. Looks like he, oh, did he catch that Queen the second I looked away? No. Okay, it's actually been retreated to the main. <laughs> Say, really? Like, the moment I look away for like a second? But reactor on the way, uh, the barracks, of course, going to get that tech lap up, and Yoda's going to be... I don't know, I've seen, I, granted, like I said, I've never really cast Yoda a lot, but I've had the pleasure of watching from afar, being a fan of StarCraft 2 and a big fan of Terran. We haven't seen him do a whole lot of mech, not in anything that I've seen too much recently, unless I've just been crazy. Again, I live in the worst time zone of the world for watching a lot of Pro League stuff, but yeah, there's that stim on the way. So I, uh... I like this if he can get some creep tumor cleaned up, but Golden, if I can give him credit, is really good at getting creeps spread out really quick. He's 
it, it's really important to stop creep early because the sooner you stop it, the less it can snowball. Once creep gets halfway across the map, it's pretty hard to clean up, but obviously can be done. Not enough healing to cause a lot of pressure though, nothing to really scare Golden into an over response. He's got a nice wall off at the top of this ramp combined with the spine crawler. Should make sure that, quite frankly, not a lot gets up here. Of course, for a Terran player, you're often looking for the chance, the rare opportunity, you can just kind of swan dive in and pick off a ton of drones if given the opportunity, but not going to happen here, not going to happen now. Reapers are going to buffer for the Hellions a little bit. Ling's not quite going to get the damage done. Yoda retreats to the middle of the map. This one one's also on the way. Actually, surprisingly, uh, I'll say fast in air quotes. Oftentimes, you see the Zerg player finish up their upgrades significantly faster than the Terran. But uh, yeah, Yoda and Golden just kind of tentative to engage one another. I think Golden knows he doesn't really have a force that can beat this outright. But if he can get a wrap around, it's really dangerous. And Yoda knows that as well. That's why we don't see him diving for the creep. Uh, but he's picked up a couple. Uh, I think he's picked up a couple tubers. Unless I'm no, just not all the creeps right here on the north. Spine Carving unburrowed kind of gives them an opportunity to move, but it, it, the links are on the other side of the map actually. Pulling these drones back and to stack them up if they fully retreat, he decides to retreat them in segments. This is really intelligent out of Golden. Oftentimes you see a Zerg player pull out the drones all at the same time, and when that happens, well, the Hellings just shout, Line them up! Meanwhile, the counterattack tries to go off, but the depots are down, and unfortunately, that's not going to be that empty wall that Golden was hoping for. There are, a, there are a lot of links in play, though. With 36, if he comes in from two different angles, he can clean this up rather decidedly. There might be a lot of Hellings here, but we all know Hellings' attack doesn't work out the greatest. And it looks like he will get the surround coming from behind with those links great on top of the Hellions. Unfortunately, Yoda is so slippery, just barely gets through, and a lot of these links start to go down. Golden has to split these up, and he does just that as he takes that right uh, ramp, but off of Creep just couldn't quite cut it. How did that not block them, man? That was so close. <laughs> but the Hellions prevail, and about four of them get away home. So this is about half of his forces, but... That's perfectly fine. Bandly Nest has been started behind this as well as a spire, so Golden's not going to get stuck on this weird Ling sort of all-in type thing. Uh, a couple of Hellions doing a bit of damage and going to drive Golden back. Uh, middle of the map though. That's a lot of Lings. It's still nothing that Yoda can really push through, especially with Marines uh, unupgraded, but once Combat Shield kicks in, once the Medivacs are out, uh, which they should be soon. There we go, Nestor production. That's the problem with Terran too. A lot of the times you find yourself a little bit gas starved in the early game. And as you get more towards the late game, you're kind of set and good to go. Yoda gonna get... Yeah, just keep these back for the time being. It's actually important Golden doesn't throw away too many of these Zerglings. The more of these he loses, the less bailing potentially is as the follow-up. And to be honest, while Larva ends up not being as big of an issue for most players, you still don't want to have to denote more Larva to the Zerglings when you want to be making just pretty much Mutalisks at a point. And uh, with that 2-2 starting up, actually, we should see that investment here soon. Lots of gas. Uh, it's not saved up, but saving up. I think he's going to get about 7 or 8 before he really goes for any. I'm surprised the Reaper's still alive, just as a curious little side note while this is going on. But that's a lot of Banelings, and still, look at the Unit Counting Station, I ask, where are the Mutalisks? He doesn't need them to clean up drops, drops haven't been an issue so far, but uh, they're definitely that nice little extra bit you need. Does get a surround on top of the Marines, but a pickup on that medevac will save a good chunk of them. Towards the south, though, if those drop off, might be able to attack the fourth with a little bit more dedication. Not a lot of Banelings, centrifugal hooks on the way, 2-2 finishing up, and of course now the Mutalisks finally, finally coming up, but Yoda has established a pretty nice third while this is going on. He set up some walls off on the sides of these depots, making sure there's not going to be any sort of Ling run bys. Uh, but it's still going to have no answer until those Mutalists actually come into play. But uh, anyways, starting off the wall, getting the, the bunker down, this is actually critically important because oftentimes you'll see Zerg players run about eight Lings up here, morph them into Banelings, and walk them into the mineral lines. This will give Yoda a bit of buffer room and a bit of reaction time to pull SCVs if necessary. Uh, one awkward medevac getting poked out by the Queens. Got some crazy overlords spread up here, by the way. If, if Pult had been playing this game instead of Yoda, we would have seen a Viking that had about seven kills on it. <laughs> As that's kind of classically what he's known for doing, but uh, here come the Banley set of Golden. My concern is this might not be enough, though. It's a little bit worrying because you never know exactly how many Banleys you need, and you never want to overmake them because it ends up being a bit of a waste. But uh, this drop on the main is going to have no answer to it. Drop around the natural going to be kind of by the Mutalisks, but not in time to point out the Marines, so. Uh, still going to be some damage going out here in that regard. Main drop is cleaned up by the looks of it, so he backs off of that. This is what, one Marine. And Golden's still on three bases. Worker's killed at this point, non-existent. No one's really been able to get to either uh, Mineral Line. 
A little bit shocking, a little bit surprising too, considering Yoda's been really in Golden's face the majority of this game, especially with those Hellions, but map presence and looks to be not much more than that. Army supplies looking pretty even, and 2 2's now finishing up for Yoda. This is kind of where the Terran player starts getting ahead a little bit. Up to this point, you're often finding yourself, you know, down in upgrades, down in overall supply. You don't have that overwhelming amount of Marines to deal with the overwhelming amount of Banelings, but. Uh, right now, Golden is pretty much closing in on Max. He's kind of got to use this timing to his advantage. If he waits too much longer... Oh, that's kind of a cool move. Bird Banelings. Ugh, it's going to be hard to see if he can actually utilize those or not. They actually kind of split up. All right, well, middle of the map, there's still a lot of Marines moving around. We got the Widow Mines coming up on the front lines, too. What I'm really concerned about, though, is these Banelings. Can he use these? Uh, it's nice that they're not burned on creep. All right, a scan does go down, so I think he kind of saw the tail end of those when he plotted them down. Oh, we also got up to 18, and behind this, Yoda's got no real signs of a fourth. He's getting a command center down, but I don't know if he can secure that gold. A big part of what he's not been doing is pressuring Golden. He kind of gave Golden that breathing room, which is what allowed him to max out. Both players actually fully maxed out at this point. Uh, but Yoda's army looking a little bit better thanks to the lack of SCVs he has. This is a bit awkward, this drop down here. Uh, collision in the middle of the map, they're going to catch some of these Widow Mines. Unfortunately, the Widow Mines going to get some good shots off on those Lings. And Golden takes a bit of damage. No workers going down behind this worth noting, despite the fact that the drop was behind the mineral line. Still a solid defense. Up here the main, Golden was ready to react thanks to that sort of overlord net he's cast out in the middle of the map. Saw this coming from a mile away, and the medevac actually almost dies. Uh, going to boost on towards the natural, uh, but I think the other queen should be able to finish the job. <laughs> Seven Marines dead in that medevac. Mutalis get on top of the production here for Yoda. This is often a problem for Terran players as well. When you start losing your reactors, when you start losing your tech labs, that's when it becomes really difficult to remax. But because the Mutalis are going to be donated to these Marines, and Yoda is going to clean up a lot of these Mutalis with those Marines, Golden's forced to defend at home with a very low bailing count. Where are the bailings? Rolling in now, perhaps a little bit too late. There's a lot of Marines, and there's more morphing in. Can he get the hits? There's no splitting here out of Yoda. He's going to get cleaned up in a big way. Trying to bait into the Widow Mines. Gets a good hit on those bailings. And while the Mutalists are actually not as cleaned up as I thought they would be. He had some Lings run through, blitz through the front lines to support these, and uh, Golden oh, he has got a really nice bank behind this. He can make 10 more Mutalists if he wants, so he can make a ton more Banelings and Zerglings. Didn't quite get to do the devastating damage I think he was intending to, but taking off Tech Labs, peeling off the reactors, all of a sudden Yoda now has to waste a lot of time not producing units, but rebuilding these uh, add-ons. South of the map, going to be double dropped once again. There are a couple Zerglings and Banelings behind this waiting. But, uh, can the Banelings get a good connection to the question? Looks like it will just barely not be able to roll in there. We do still have Widow Mines picking off. Well, actually, a Widow Mine got picked off. Guess the Banelings must have exploded on top. But gotta be careful running forward. He sees the hits. A couple good Widow Mine shots go off. Nonetheless, these units are such a gamble sometimes, whether they're good or bad. But this time, this game, they've been getting some pretty good, pretty solid hits off. Spine cars will keep the drop at bay for the time being. And I... I'm glad Yoda went for this fourth down here. Planetary Fortress established. It's not going to be anything too crazy to worry about. But Golden moving on to Ultras. He's on Hive Tech. Level 3 weapons have started. Level 3 armor has started. No Adrenal Glands, oddly enough. But still, he's taking a gold fifth while this is going on. Golden fifth. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry. Uh <laughs> Level 3 armor finishing up here for our Terran player, so now he's kind of maxed out in that regard. Worry about Concussor shells a little bit late, not going to come into play just yet, but Ultralis are in uh, in production, so it can be a little bit worrisome. I like the Overseer's actually supply block, you're not supply blocking, uh, contaminating the barracks, that's kind of cool. Oftentimes when you're dealing this damage, it's the supply of like two Marines at a time. Eight Marines popping all at the same time that start shutting your Mutalisks down, but by uh, even blocking two of them, the Mutalisks have a lot more breathing room to do some damage. We'd love to see some more contaminates actually, it's just so expensive they can't do it. Uh, but picking off a medevac here, even getting these odd amounts of Marines, starting to trade out the Mutalisks because they become less important moving into the late game. The one thing I'm a little bit concerned about for Golden, though, is he's using these to attack and not shut down drops, not stop damage from happening before it can happen. Kind of, uh, what was it, Minority Report? Was that the movie? You kill the criminals before they become bad? Whatever. More links to get into the main to try and uh, get on top of this. I like that he didn't just go straight to Ultras, though. So many times we watch Terror Zerg players, Koreans, North Americans, Europeans alike, where they go for too many Ultras without Infestor support, without enough Banelings behind it, and they end up just dying to Terran players kiting them across the map. Big pickoff on that jump, by the way. Uh, but the Widow Mines are established, and the Ultras need to be on those front lines. They need to soak those hits. There's so many Widow Mines to keep these Banelings back. The gold base will fall. Uh, the fourth does fall. Or fifth, rather. But looking to wrap around, still sees the Thor, sees the Widow Mines. He knows he can't quite get in there for free, and if he clumps up, if he clumps up for even a second, whether it's the Banelings or whether it's the Mutalisks, there's so much splash damage in this Terran army. 
Which is weird to consider, because once upon a time, like, siege tanks were, like, the splash unit, but we don't see those being incorporated at all. We've got some broad bailings kind of around the middle of the map, or the southern part of the map. That's kind of cool. They're so hard to utilize, but if done correctly, broad bailings can be devastating to a Terran army, but uh, it's really key. He doesn't burrow any on creep, and that's why we don't see him doing it. Terran player's always going to be scanning forward as they advance to clean up creep anyways. You don't want them to catch those bailings, but uh, Zerglings are going to get slaughtered by those Widowmine hits. Oh my god, takes a big hit. But both players still pretty much maxed out. Not hard for Golden with this bank to make more units. But, well, Bailey's going to get actually on top of the Widow Mines. Takes out a good chunk of them. It's kind of interesting. Infestors have kind of a dual purpose at this point, too. You'll see combination fungal growth go on top of the army, which is always going to be good. Don't get me wrong. But also beyond that, Infested Terrans can be plopped out to try and bait those Widow Mine hits. They've got enough health to soak uh, a cocoon hit. But uh, pushing forward, there's still Widow Mines. Going to rearm this. Oh, the Bailey's are getting massacred. I don't know if it's Yoda, or if it's Yoda getting just the most god mode control on these Widow Mines, or whether it's Golden coming in a little bit too boldly with these Banelings. Either way, this has been some really good Widow Mine hits this game, and you just don't see that enough. You don't see that often, either. Uh, regardless, where's the middle of the map? These Ultras still just kind of uh, <laughs> meandering around. Oh, what do I do? How do I get used? Uh, of course, we'd love to have these on the front lines, but it's really hard to control those through these Banelings. They're supposed to... I mean, the big thing about the Ultras is... They're big enough to soak splash damage as well, so the Widowmine goes off on an Ultralisk. It won't kill Banelings that are right next to it. Not unless there's been a hotfix I don't know about. But uh, down here towards the south, we have another drop. But Golden, again, ready for the response. I kind of give it up to Golden. A lot of times, Terran players catch the entire army off guard, but Golden's always had like a Baneling and five Zerglings at each base ready to respond to these drops. Widowmines go off on absolutely nothing but Lings this time, so the Banelings start to carry through, but they go off on the Thor. A bit of miscontrol, I think, as he had his whole army selected. But as Fungal Growths go off, and as this army starts getting caught, the Ultras start pushing through. The Mutalists are not really numerous enough to do a lot of damage, but there's not enough to stop these Ultras. The Sim City is going to help for sure, but Golden. Actually, he's actually denied the, the gold base, so not even that big of an issue. Trying to find a way to deal with the Marauders, trying to get past the Sim City, knowing he can't do it out without Zerglings. He's actually making some corruptors behind this, and did he make a greater spire? Are we going to see Broodlings? No. I thought we were going to see uh, Broodlords and Broodlings would be kind of cool to see with all these melee upgrades, especially, but that's not going to be the case. Not right now, at least. Uh, middle of the map, coming here with Golden. Or, uh, his army is. I, I don't want to say unstoppable, but. It's uh, it's not easy for Yoda to engage right now. The problem is too, he's got he had originally a lot of Marines, not a lot of Marauders. I mean, he had Marauders in the army, but um, yeah, this is gonna be just a little bit rough to deal with. Oh gosh, there's a guy with a package at my door, and I can't abandon this game. I don't have a co-caster to cover me. Uh, <laughs> this is awkward. Talk about that more in a sec. We listen to the manga to try and clean this up. And uh, one sec. Hey, guy at the door. Can you give me like five, ten minutes? Can you give me a few minutes? Hmm? Yeah, can you give me like just five minutes? Uh, okay, give me, give me. Uh, one sec, one sec. Uh, here, guys, I'm gonna put the controls. I'm so sorry about this. I'll put the controls on another caster so you can at least watch the game. I'll be back. Awkward, unprofessional cast is awkward and unprofessional. If Namshar was in the game, this wouldn't have been an issue. Sorry about that, guys, but I'm back in the action for now. Um, my headset broke. I ordered a new headset, so that's why I had to get the door. I couldn't, ha I couldn't risk him uh, not delivering that. <laughs> Anyways, Mules are going to clip these couple of drops, and this game is still going on strong. 3-3-3 three, three, three across the board, and we got the Greater Spire now finishing up. Broodlords are a weird thing to see. Sorry, I'm about to I sprinted to the door and back. Broodlords are a strange thing to see, but... Uh, there's no Vikings, there's no way to really deal with this, and a lot of times you think like, oh, well that's fine, Marines will just stim underneath the Broodlords. And once upon a time that may have been the case, but with Ultras, Bailings, and Infestors, that is not going to happen. <laughs> oh gosh, again, I'm sorry about that, that was really awkward, I've never had to do that before. <laughs> Ultras, you know, the Beatles count has kind of dwindled a bit too, with only five it's enough to pick off Medivacs. I, it's, it's... It's nice that he's not investing too much in more, but the Corruptors are going to be somewhat useless. Four, bro four Broodlords are nice, but six Corruptors are not really going to get a lot done. I guess he's trying to build, pre build these in anticipation of the uh, 
the Vikings that will be made to respond to this. But the key thing is with this tech swap, it's going to catch Yoda off guard. Yoda's still making a lot of Marines. He's got a lot of Marauders coming up. And there's no real answer to the Broodlords, which have now been revealed. He scanned this. He sees this. Ah, but it's it's one of those things like, is it too late to make Vikings? He doesn't have weapon upgrades for them. This isn't like he's playing mech. And the Broodlings are just going to be so many for you. So trip the Widow Mines. Oh my god, that's actually a great use of the Broodlings. That's really cool. Now that there's no more to worry about, he just continues to push forward. There is a planetary fortress here, which is going to be really hard to break. Uh, but the Broodlord's just laying siege to the base. Ultras in wait, waiting for the army to overextend just a little too much. He's got some infestors. There's the fungal growth that was waiting to go off. Last couple units here are starting to go down, but let's not forget, this isn't this isn't Yoda's army. He's still got more behind this, but he takes the planetary fortress at the cost of a lot. Broodlord's still standing. I mean, the Thor can't even help out that much. You can transform a Thor, but even then, it doesn't do a lot of damage, and his range is so limited to deal with this. Strangely enough, there are enough uh, medevacs here to give each of these units a personal healer because they start to die out. But there's the counterattack. There's the other part of the army I was talking about. Yoda, though, he doesn't have more money behind this is the problem. If Golden had gone for the fourth base instead of trying to assault into the third slash natural slash gold area, maybe he could have knocked Yoda down a peg. But Yoda is... Guys, Yoda is suffocating. Look at that mineral count right now. It's just non-existent. I was gone for like 20 seconds. It was the only <laughs> so I continue to push one. I'm sorry, I guess get super awkward gas. Welcome to Base Street TV. Uh, Ling's gonna flood on in here. The SCVs have actually been pulled into this provide just that little bit of extra buffer, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. There's too many broodlords, infestations, and fungals and gore they are going everywhere. Just a puddle of blood as ultralists die on top of marines, as marauders die on top of ultralists. But I think the broodlords in the end are just barely gonna win this out. There's a couple Ultras on the ground that maybe Yoda could have dealt with in any other situation, but not with the Broodlings and not with the Corruptor support picking off these medevacs. This game looks like it's finally over. Golden looks to take game number one. But it's game number one as the stress point, guys. Everyone making fun of me for- If I- if I live with my mom, she can sign the package for me, you dummies. <laughs> what a great game, what a good- series this is going to be. Game number one, ladies and gentlemen, is going to go to Golden.